Okay, Chuck Scoville here with head coach Hillard Howard. Coach, uh, big game starting off this season against the Prestonsburg Black Cats. It's going to be a big one. Uh, Prestonsburg got a fine football team and an excellent defensive team. Got to see you last week against Mate Juan. Mate Juan lost a lot of kids from last year, but the offense looked like it was moving pretty well with either uh, Pruitt or Powers at quarterback. Looks like you got five or six, maybe seven running backs that can all get the job done. Well, you know, Mate One's not a real strong team this year, and they hurt themselves a lot by several fumbles and turnovers. But, uh, you know, we feel like we're going to make some improvement each week, and we feel like in the middle of the season we're going to be a whole lot better football team. Playing a lot, a lot of people right now running, running a lot of different backs, a lot of different linemen, so we're trying to get a good nucleus in there to work around. Eddie DeRamus, a uh, big sophomore for you. Going to use him some in that short yardage situation. Looks like he's a pretty strong runner for, uh, for three or four yards, can carry some folks with him. Well, Eddie needs to get a little weight off of him right now, but we will be running him at nose on defense, and we will run him a little bit at the halfback position. Prestonsburg lost a lot of talent out of that backfield. Thomas Ratliff returns at quarterback, but it looks like their strength right now uh, as the season starts, that defensive unit, uh, the Morris kid at linebacker looks real impressive. Well, he's, he's a good one. I saw him last year in the state finals, and I thought then he was one of the better linebackers in the state, and I still feel like he is. Uh, you know, we're going to try to contain him some way, and I don't know, I don't know if there's a soft place over there to run or not. We're going to be looking for it. Right now, everybody's talking about the Pikeville offense matching up against the Prestonsburg defense, but uh, Prestonsburg with uh, Thomas Ratliff, Blake Leslie, they've got a couple of pretty good offensive uh, weapons there too, don't they? Well, they got, they got five or six defensive starters returning, and, uh, you know, they're going to be so tough defensively, they're going to get the ball in pretty good position on most teams. So we just hope that we can try to control them a little and try to move the football some to get ourselves in decent position. But, uh, you know, again, they're tough to run against, and uh, I think their offense is a good offense. I don't think their offense is where their defense is at this point, but uh, nobody is usually this early in the season. How about uh, health-wise? Uh, did you come out of that Mate One uh, Classic in pretty good shape? Got any kids banged up? Uh, no, we have no one hurt. We've got a starting guard. We've got three starters back this year from last year, and uh, one of them's out. So on offense, we've got two returning starters. Uh, Dayton Jones had a sprained ankle that he got at camp. He's still nursing that, so hopefully we'll get him back next week, but he will not dress or play tonight. Okay, always good to talk to you, Coach, and welcome back. Best of luck tonight. Thank you very much. Talking to head coach Hillard Howard of the Pikeville Panthers, we're going to take a break here and see if we can go see uh, Bill Letton of the Prestonsburg Black Cats here on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. Okay, here with head coach Bill Letton of the Prestonsburg Black Cats. Uh, coach, made it all the way down to the state finals last year. Lost a lot of starters out of that offensive backfield, but they're talking about the defense of the Black Cats being mighty tough again this year. What's your opinion of this ball club coming into this ball game tonight? Well, you know, we, we should be a good defensive ball club. We hope to be. Uh, we also hope to be a good offensive ball club. Uh, you know, I told the team tonight that uh, uh, regardless of, of who we lost or who's not here this year, this program goes on, and we expect uh, we expect uh, big things out of whoever's in the backfield, and, and big things are to be expected 10 years down the road of whoever that's going to be in the backfield. So, you know, we lost some key people, but we've got some good people back, and we, we're expecting big things from them. Got uh, Thomas Ratliff, a veteran, coming back at quarterback. I've heard some good things about uh, Blake Leslie. Uh, you're building a program down there uh, at Prestonsburg now that's uh, really getting on par with uh, Belfry and Pikeville as far as tradition. you got a winning tradition. got a lot of kids coming out. And uh, that feeder system in Floyd County, I know my kids go down there to Allen Elementary. The uh, feeder system starting to develop down there for you in Floyd County as well, isn't it? Right. Both uh, Adams Middle School and Allen Great School have big numbers this year, and, and that uh, our freshman numbers are up. So, you know, it looks like the future's, future's bright, but we got to keep winning and uh, keep the tradition alive, and hopefully we can start this year off on a positive note. How's the team health-wise? Everybody in pretty good shape coming into this ball game tonight? Well, we lost our tight end, uh, Gavin Hale, uh, Thursday night to a knee injury, so he's out. And we lost a defensive end, Tim Lane, last week in a scrimmage with a wrist uh, fracture. So uh, we're not full speed, but uh, like I said, whoever we put in there tonight, we're expecting big things out of, and we'll just go right on. No, the Pikeville Panthers, we got a chance to watch them last week over in Mate One. Looks like they've got five, six, seven running backs that they can interchange pretty much, and uh, they all look like they can get the job done. Doug Powers, Jonathan Pruitt both look like they're pretty good quarterbacks. What, uh, what are you planning to do to stop them? Well, we're going to play our defense. We, we believe in our system. We don't make any adjustments for anybody. We feel like our system will cover all the bases, and, uh, you know, if they find something that we're weak on, we'll work on it. But, uh, you know, we're, we're confident that we can come out and, and play good defense against this team. 
uh, you know, conditioning, you know, with, with them having more depth in the backfield, that is a concern. But, you know, like I said, these kids are just going to have to suck it up, play four quarters of tough football tonight, and, and, and hopefully come out on the, on the top tonight. Well, we're looking for a real good ball game. Always good talking to you, Coach, and best of luck tonight and during the season. Coach Bill Letton of the Prestonsburg Black Cats will be back for the kickoff of this game on WPRG Channel 5 TV right after this timeout. Welcome back to the Hambly Athletic Complex and uh, Chuck Scoville along with Bill Bevins. Just about a minute to kick off Bill Pikeville and Prestonsburg. Looks like it's going to be a good one on paper and uh, hopefully it'll be a good one out on the field uh, as well. I expect so. Uh, we've got uh, two good matchups. Of course, uh, Prestonsburg in that double-A division, Pikeville in the single-A. Uh, both the squads, uh, uh, Prestonsburg lost uh, probably more than Pikeville did last year. Pikeville, relatively young squad, but I'll tell you what, they've got some talent on there. Big Dramus and, uh, of course, you got... Brent Coleman, the sophomore, starting for this squad. And, of course, you got uh, some experience. Jonathan Pruitt, quarterback. you got a backup quarterback, a big guy that can see over the line if he gets in there. Doug Powers, he's a sophomore. He's a dandy, too. Yeah, they sure do. And uh, we saw them over in Matewan last week. Both of them had some good mustard on that ball. They can zip it down the field accurately and with some zing on it. And this Pikeville uh, team, they don't like to pass a lot, but uh, when they need to, they can sure throw that football. Now, you, of course, you know a little bit more about these squads than I do probably, Chuck. Uh, it is uh, Coleman, is that the one they refer to now as the Rocket? Or one of those boys on there, is they, I think they refer to the Rocket. I know they've got some speed <laughs> size on there, though. They do. They've got about six or seven backs they can throw in and out, and no one has really just come in there and just taken over command of a, of a certain position on the in the offensive backfield. And uh, I guess that's good for Hillard Howard, though. You get somebody banged up. Uh, you've got three or four other guys that can slip right uh, in there, and your offense doesn't meet it, miss a beat. Chuck, I never really got a chance to uh, listen to you to see what I know you talked to Coach Bill Letton and uh, Hillard Howard. What was some of their thoughts about tonight's game? Bill Letton uh, says the defense he's uh, confident in. He's got five or six starters back from last year. Got some other people that have some experience on that defense uh, back from last year. Says they're not going to change anything for no matter whoever they play. They're going to keep the defense exactly the way he plays it. He said uh, last year was last year, and uh, these kids, it's part of a tradition. He didn't actually say tradition, but he says, I expect big things out of everybody, and uh, five years from now, ten years from now, I am uh, still expect big things out of everybody. So what he's saying there is that Prestonsburg Black Fat football has arrived, and like Belfry and like Pikeville, that year in and year out, he expects to have a quality program and expects to have players that can produce excellent results for him. I know that everybody was talking about the defense of uh, Prestonburg last year, how they, I mean, they would just hold their uh, opponents to relatively nothing in score. Now, uh, what basically do you say about that? Well, I think he's pretty confident in the defense. They lost a couple of big kids on the defense, but I think they've got a lot more experience and, and a lot more depth coming back on defense than they've done on offense. He thinks the offense is going to come around. Uh, Blake Leslie's got a quick little running back, number 21. Uh, Thomas How uh, Ratliff is back. Ratliff's got a couple years experience at the quarterback position. And if there's one position in the backfield you want to have experience at, it's at quarterback because that's the leadership role on that team. And uh, Pikeville, they're no powerhouse really on defense right now. They've got a lot of young kids on defense right now. Hillard Howard trying to sort them out and see who's going to fit in what slots. So, uh, Prestonsburg will have a good opportunity to show what they can do on offense. I don't think Pikeville's defense is going to be, you know, a dominating type defense, at least early in this season until the kids get some experience. I, I'm predicting Pikeville to have a good, well, I know they've got a good squad this year, Chuck, but I'll tell you what, in the next two or three years, watch out. We're going to see them down at Cardinal Stadium again, yeah, I believe. Yeah, I think so. They've got a lot Probably of Probably two years in kids. a row. They've got a lot of offensive firepower right now. They've got a lot of depth on offense and uh, scoring capabilities. And if the defense can come along, you might see them down there as early as this year. I know they've got some uh, fine young uh, men in there playing for them, no doubt about that. And like I say, a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores. Give these kids uh, this year will make uh, a big difference in them. They'll have another year's experience the time they get to be juniors. I'll tell you what, some of these teams uh, better watch out for this pot uh, squad. And Bill Letton, he's expecting this team of Prestonsburg to come out and play well this year. He says he wants to play one more game this year than they did last year. Well, uh, what he means is they want to win a state championship in 2A this year. And even though they even though they lost a great number of starters and a lot of talent off that ball club, he thinks that he's got the kids and the horses to step right back up this year and be uh, a powerhouse in the state of Kentucky. That's exactly right. And uh, here comes both teams out on the... Uh 
field, and uh, I'll tell you what, by the uh, look of this crowd and the sound of this crowd, looks like they're, uh, they're, this place is going to get fired up, Chuck. Well, the stands are still <laughs> packed, which uh, leads you to believe that not too many people have headed home from uh, Belfry and Montgomery County, and a lot of the folks from Prestonsburg have filled the stands on the other side as well. It's going to be an exciting ball game. We're about ready for kickoff, so we'll go ahead and take a break here for a uh, few commercial sponsor messages and be back with the opening kickoff of this second game. Pikeville and Prestonsburg right after this on Channel 5 Sports. We're back at the W.C. Hanley Athletic Field for tonight's second game of the uh, Pike County Bowl between the Preston Burke Blackcats, coached by Bill Letton and uh, Coach Hillard Howard. He's back there at head coach again of the Pikeville Panthers. Bill Bevins along with Chuck Scoville. And, Chuck, I'm uh, looking for a good one. Kern, Kern Weddington, Brent Coleman, and uh, Ratliff back deep for Pikeville. Kickoff by Johnson taken right up the middle. I think number 20... Uh, Brent Coleman gets the ball out to the 25 yard line. Tell you what, we just said hello and banged that kickoff off at win, and uh, I didn't even have a chance to tell you who was back there to return the ball. Uh, you try to get you about there, try to check. <laughs> that Dr. Out. Don's a tough customer to work for, let me tell you now. He, he says, uh, You don't need anything to eat, Charlie. You ate at lunchtime. He says, We got a ball game to do. Says, Announce and then grab about to eat between commercials, buddy. Jonathan Pruitt at quarterback hands off to the first man through number 25, Brent Coleman. Oh. Got a flag in the backfield, maybe on Pikeville. See Bray Justice, Gary's little girl down there. She's a cheerleader for the Pikeville Panthers. Boy, she's grown up since I used to work down there at the radio station. <laughs> Haven't seen Karen tonight. Karen normally at all these ball games. He's probably here somewhere. I'll tell you oh, what. Oh, yeah. Got lost this in the crowd. crowd. I tell you what, yeah. <laughs> Unless you're six foot five, it's hard to see anything above this crowd. Boy, there's people all over the place down here tonight. Face, ma face mask oh. against uh, against Prestonburg. So that uh, moves Pipe up here in excellent field position. You're uh, mid-center line. Chuck. They might have had a holding or, an off or a procedure, that flag thrown in the Pikeville backfield. But Prestonsburg with a face mask and... Uh, Pikeville, good read on the play by Pruitt, but uh, Prestonsburg's defense right there. They stack up Coleman. Prestonsburg blitzed in the middle. Pruitt rolled out to the right, pitched back, but uh, Prestonsburg followed the ball and the play real well. And very little gain on the play. Looks like they may have lost three yards there, uh, Bill. Loss of two. You're right, so it'll be about second, 12 or 13 here for Pikeville Panthers right here in front of us. Got the ball near mid. Court line. See so if we can get some of these players in here for Prestonsburg. Jason Spencer, 61 on one side of the line. Also number 51, John Lyons over here on our side of the field. Hand off to Coleman. Coleman getting about six tough yards as he's wrestled down there by number 21, Blake Leslie in the backfield. Black Cats not quite as big up front as they were last year with uh, Fitzpatrick and uh, DeRossett and uh, Elliott and some of those guys. They had some 250 and 60 pounders on the line. Still got a couple of good sized boys there. See number 42 checking into that lineup for Pipe West. Big Eddie Doremus. They list him about 250 pounds, I believe. He's a uh, sophomore for this squad. Doremus kind of part of that bull moose backfield. Good short yardage runner, a fine blocker. Fake to Coleman. Pruitt going to keep it, and he's going nowhere. Great open field tackle by number 40, it looks like, for Prestonsburg. Robbie Reisner, 5'9", 191-pound senior. Pikeville going to have to kick it away on fourth down. Tell you what, uh, they got some good blocking in the middle of the line. Pruitt went to the left, and uh, he got pulled down from behind. Well, Bill Letton said he prided this team's defense, and uh, right now we show they showed why he's got a lot of pride in them. This team uh, looked pretty tough on this first offensive possession to Pikeville. They stacked them up pretty well. One of the best defensive teams uh, last year I've ever seen, I'll tell you. Punt coming down to number 30 for Prestonsburg. That's fair, Mike Shepard. Fair catch. Prestonsburg. They'll take over there. Where's that ball marked down there? Uh, right around the 20, I believe. Just inside the 20, about the about 17, 17, 18, 18 yard line. Hard to 
add up those things real quick when you're looking at an angle. <laughs> so we'll see what the Black Cats can do on offense. The defense did a pretty good job. Their first stand in there. Splitting out wide to the left side here, number 17. That is Ryan Ortega. Ryan, a pretty good basketball player. Good three-point shooter for the Black Cats team by uh, coached by Gordon Perido. Big Ramos right on the line there for Piper. Ratliff handing off to... Uh, See if we can get the number here. I don't think that was Blake Leslie. Mike Shepard, number 30 on the carry. So Shepard and Leslie going to be operating in the backfield. Blake Leslie, the one with the speed in the backfield for Prestonsburg. Shepard, a six foot, 185 pound senior. He's back from last year, isn't he, Chuck? Isn't he a junior? Yeah, he uh, played a little bit last year. I'll tell you what, they had a great backfield last year with. Uh, Hyden and, and a couple of those other boys. I'll tell you what, that Seth Hyden knew what to do with the ball when he got it. <laughs> Mike Shepard finding the running room very tight in there. Maybe it picked up a yard. Tackled in there by Eddie Duramus of Pikeville. Eddie has got a couple of kids with some good size. Uh, Eddie Duramus and uh, Ricky Whitehead, number 62. He goes 290 pounds. Duramus 250 right in the middle of that line. It's hard to run through them. <laughs> Over on the other side, number 75, Justin Harris is 275 pounds. So they got three big kids right in the middle of the line. Now, you're not going to run right through the you middle. You might go around much. them, but yeah. not the. <laughs> Third down play for Ratliff and the Black Cats. Ratliff on a keeper looking for some running room. He's got a little bit, and he dives. He may have enough for the first down as he's out of bounds right over near that first down marker. Mm -hmm. He got real close to it if he didn't get it. Thomas Ratliff's got good speed, plays basketball as well. Football really his main sport. Got the first down, picked it up by about a half a yard as he dove over that pole out of bounds. Some Black Cats retain possession. Sure, Coach Letton would like nothing better than a long time consuming drive here by the Black Cats. Give that offensive team some confidence in themselves. It's a very young unit. Ratliff on a keeper around that right side again. Picks up about three yards before he goes out of bounds, about the 32-yard line. Doremus uh, showing some pretty good lateral he, pursuit over there. He's been in on a couple of three of those tackles here early in the first quarter. He's just a sophomore. Coach Hillard Howard says uh, Eddie needs to lose a little bit of weight. I think what they'll probably do is get Eddie in the weight room a little bit more, turn that weight into some solid mass because that kid's uh, big, a big force to reason with the next three years uh, in the middle of that line. Get him in that weight room, pumping some of that iron. Pitch back to Shepard. Shepard on a halfback pass and uh, no flag call. Number 17, that was uh, Ryan Ortega, the intended receiver. He slipped down, got his foot tangled up with the defender there. Incidental contact, no flag and Makes it a third down and seven for the Black Cats. I'm sure Pikeville would like to hold them here, get a good chance to uh, get that ball back, get their offensive team back out there. Kern Weddington uh, checks out and uh, uh, checks in at number 62 for Pikeville. That is uh, Ricky Whitehead checking out, so the pass defensive unit coming in. Extra back in the ball game. Leslie in motion, lines up in a slot here to the right side. Ratliff rolling out to the right, being pursued by Weddington. He's got a little bit of running room, tucks his head under. He's not going to have enough in the no, first he down. Didn't, didn't make it. Going to be stopped about the 32 yard line. Number 75 is a big boy there for Pikeville, too, Chuck. Who, who's that on there? 75 for Pikeville is uh, Justin Harris, 6'2, 275. Another good size boy. Seems like Pikeville every year has got one or two big kids that anchor the middle of that line. Remember D. Anthony Honaker and uh, Jason Blackburn here a couple of years ago. Right. Almost Nearly blocked. blocked. Shepard gets the kickoff. Good bounce inside the 40 down to about the 35 yard lines where the Pikeville Panthers will take it on offense. 5.55 left here in the first period of play. No score. Chuck Scoville, Bill Bevins, and Dr. Don Bevins here from WPRG Channel 5. Nightcap of the Pike County Bowl.
Panthers come out on offense. Let's check the backfield. I think that is number 17, John Hatfield in the backfield with Brent Coleman and number 40, Chris Strait. Let's see offsides. I believe he might have been drawn off of Chuck. Let's see. Westensburg had a real aggressive defensive unit last year. Encroachment on the defense. It'll go against the defense. So you're right. They're looking to get their hits in uh, any way they can get them. And uh, so, so that'll give Pop five more yards. Lining up in the neutral zone. First, down and five. First and five at the 39. As we said, Hatfield and Coleman in the backfield. And who's got the football there? Oh. Pruitt gives off to Hatfield. And Hatfield didn't get anything. May have lost a yard. Larry Morris, we'll hear that name a lot tonight. As uh, Coach Hillard Howard said, and uh, Hillard doesn't lavish praise on people too easily. He said uh, Morris, one of the top linebackers in the state of Kentucky, he thought he was one of the top in the state last year and expects him to be even better this year. And Jason Falls from uh, down in Moorhead Stateway said he thought that Morris was one of the top three or four linebackers in the entire state as well. A little bit of a mix up in the backfield and uh, Doramus going nowhere. They did not have a chance to get that play going. I'll tell you what, they climbed all over Doramus that time. <laughs> Big hit and the Prestonsburg faithful come to life, but uh, it's not Eddie Doramus' fault. Uh, they ran into each other in the backfield and he was stopped cold, had to start up again, and uh, by that time the defense was in on him. Just a little bit of miscommunication on that play, a little best of that play. Jonathan Pruitt says, which one of you want the ball? And uh, <laughs> they flipped a coin, and by the time they flipped the coin and called it, uh, the Black Cat defense was in on them. Okay, they gave it to the big man, but I'll tell you what, he was swamped that time. <laughs> That's kind of surprising to see him running laterally, too. I figured he'd be going, you know, strictly <laughs> north, up north and south <laughs> runner, yeah. Pruitt dropped back that pass. Swing pass, and oh, good open field tackle and hit there by Prestonsburg. Let's see, Blake Leslie, number 21 with a hit. Pikeville had a blocker out there. Leslie took out the blocker and the, and the receiver. So right now the Pikeville offense that uh, looked so sharp last week against Matewan having a little trouble moving the ball against this Black Cat defense. Kind of expected Prestonsburg to uh, play some real stingy defense here early in this ball game. They just had an awesome unit last year. By number a high 51. snap and Prestonsburg gets it. I saw that one coming, Chuck. Number 53 Woo. up after Prestonburg. 53, Paul Collins. Collins in there. I'll tell you what, he uh, nobody blocked him out on the line. Black Cats offense going to set up in great field position here. Defense creates offense. That's what the Black Cats have done in this one. Punter was number 89, and I don't have an 89 on my roster, which is nice, but uh, it may have been 88, Neil Hamilton. But in any event, uh, the snap was a little bit high, and he took his time coming back down and trying to get that kick off, and by the time he did, uh, Collins in on him. Prestonsburg Shepard looking for some running room. Doesn't find a whole lot there, a gain of about three. Good defense there, um, but Pike will behold him. If there's a question mark on Pikeville this year, it's mm -hmm. on the defense early. They've got a lot of young kids, and they're trying to just fit them into the right spots, get that puzzle fitted together. And uh, right now, in the early going, the defense has done a pretty good job. They looked pretty sharp last week against, against Mate Juan. Mate Juan didn't pick up much in the way of yardage against him. Ratliff gives off. Second man through this time, and the ball carrier... Trying to catch the uniform number there. It's number 30, Shepard, once again. So they're down there around the eight, nine yard line. So uh, Prestonburg threatening here. 2.16 left to go in the first quarter of play. Ball just inside the 10 at the nine. Third and five. They can go to the four for the first down, nine yards for the touchdown. Coming up to center is number 61 over the ball. That is Jason Spencer. For the Black Cats, Ratliff takes a snap, gives off to Shepard, straight up the middle he goes to the six-yard line. Going to be a couple of yards shy. Shy of the first down, excuse me. Mike Shepard, the ball carrier. 
Fourth down and two. What do you do here, Bill? <laughs> this is a, always a tough one to call. You're down close to the end zone. Do you run the ball? Do you pass it? I'll tell you what. You're that, you're, you're that close. I, I think you. I think you go. <laughs> oh yeah. See what that, no doubt about it. it yeah. Right well, up the middle or the run around the end. <clears throat> I, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Larry Morris is set up in the Straight back up the middle. I think Morris may have gotten the handoff and he's got the first down. Gave it to Big Morris and just let him do his thing straight up the middle. Well, we heard earlier in the evening that uh, Morris may get uh, the football in the backfield. All state linebacker candidate also going to be playing some fullback, much like Eddie DeRamus does for Pikeville. And I see about eight more pizzas coming up the stairs, Bill. So maybe, just maybe, if Don gives <laughs> us a break here at halftime, we'll get us a little pizza. <laughs> First and goal for the Black Cats at the three. The handoff to Shepard. Shepard met hard. Fights, fumble, fumble. The football. Who's got it in the end zone? Uh, Pikeville's got uh, no. Prestonsburg, Morris, Larry Morris. I'll tell you what, Chuck. It was up for grabs. It was it hit, hit the ground, and it was players going everywhere. But uh, Morris fell on top of it down there, so it gives uh, Prestonsburg a touchdown here early. Larry Morris, the two-way man, coming in from the linebacker spot to play fullback, mostly in there for blocking ability and short yardage running, recovers a fumble in the end zone, and Prestonsburg on the scoreboard first with a six-to-nothing lead. Looks like number 34, John Morris, going to come out and try to. Oh, he's going to hold for Ratliff. Thomas Ratliff going to kick. Oh man, after my own heart, going to kick barefooted out there. Quarterback. Kick is up and good. No, no. Too sad. Too good too to sad. me. Huh. I believe it's off to the left a little bit, Chuck. Okay. So the score remains six to nothing. Prestonsburg in the lead with 45 seconds left in the first period of play. We'll go ahead and take a timeout here on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. Okay, 46 seconds left here in the first period of play. The Prestonsburg Blackcats have drawn blood first. Turnover by the Pikeville Panthers uh, kind of cost the Panthers, Bill, and uh, Prestonsburg almost lost that football themselves, but Larry Morris, the All-State candidate there at linebacker, astutely jumping on it in the end zone, and uh, Prestonsburg draws first blood. they got to feel good about that. Sure do. Morris just fell on it, and uh, like I say, the uh, block punt by Prestonsburg sure paid off for the Blackcats. So the defense helps the offense create some points and the kickoff about ready to be coming to you. Uh, I think it's Ricky Johnson, number 75, going to boot it away. He kicked off first. Let's see who number 75 is. Ricky Johnson. There we go. Ball mishandled by Brent Coleman. He picks it back up, looks for some running room, gets outside the 20 to about the 22, maybe the 23-yard line. First down for the Panthers, and uh, that offense needs to get untracked here. They have been throttled in the first couple of possessions by the Black Cats defense. So it'll be first and 10 for Potwell at their own 23 here. Let's see. Pruitt, handoff to Coleman. Coleman spinning, finds a little running room up close to a first down at about the 32-yard lines where I think they're going to mark it. He came close to breaking it, Chuck. He's got some good speed. He and Ratliff both can run uh, to the outside with good quickness. This Brent Coleman, I believe he's just a sophomore for this squad. 5'7", yep. sophomore. Number 28 checking into the Pikeville backfield first time tonight. Uh, good, I don't have a 28. That's the end of the first period of play with a score. Prestonsburg 6, Pikeville nothing. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this timeout on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. Okay, welcome back to the Hamley Athletic Complex. Start of the second quarter, the Pikeville Panthers on offense. Second down and about a yard to go. Hand off to, it looks like Hatfield with the ball. And he's right up there near the first down. Panthers got the first down, needed two, picked up three. Found out, found out who number 28 was. Well, that was uh, Ben Wagner checked into uh, Coach uh, Hill and Howard's lineup down there, Chuck. 
And Wagner checking back out a number 89 who I don't have on my roster checks in for the Panthers. <laughs> I will get this figured out sooner or later. It's early. Pruitt barking signals, gives off. First man through and nothing there. Oh, Prestonburg, good defense by Prestonburg. They did not get fooled by that one at all, and they stack up Brent Coleman. I tell you, Coleman has not found very much running room tonight. Had that one Adam little run Minnick, here for about eight yards. Number 89, Adam Minix is the one that just checked into the lineup. I should have remembered this from last week, Don, but when you get my age, your mind just doesn't retain as much information as it used to. <laughs> Big third down, well, second down play. I'm sorry, they have the first down, and they got a second and almost 11 second. to go. Coleman, oh, Coleman, big up. Good, uh, Coleman for the first down. Put yeah, on a so. first to speed there, uh, Bill. Not very much running room, but he uh, avoided a tackle and. Uh, Turned on the quickness a little bit and picked up about 14 yards in the first down. Good run by Brent Coleman, the sophomore that time. First down, 10 to go. The ball right at the midfield. Striped Pikeville Panthers on the march. They trail 6 to nothing. 10-34 left in the half. Pruitt handoff to number 20. That is Abe Boyd. He's off to the races. Will he get in there? Morris trips him up at the goal line. I give him. Let's see. Uh -uh, no, he did not. He didn't make it into the end zone. I don't think, Bill. I thought he got tripped up just short of the goal line. First down. That's right. The uh, call was incorrect by the first referee down there. I thought he got him on uh, about the two or three yard line yeah. down there. One referee got real excited there and raised his hands and the crowd started going wild. And I said, wait a minute, he got knocked down about the two or three yard line, did not make it into the end zone. Good open field run down there by number 50, Larry Morris. Pikeville first down and goal to go. Timeout Pikeville and Hillard Howard not real happy with that mix up on the referee's part, uh, but uh, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. He's got to send that off. Excuse me, offense back out on the field. Number 10, Ben Cassidy checking in. First time he's been in the lineup for Pikeville. Who was that? Number 20, Abe Boyd. Number 20, yep. Boyd. You'll see Abe Boyd, uh, Josh Baroni, uh, Brent Coleman, Kearney Weddington, Eddie Doremus, Ben Wagner. There's about six, seven running backs he'll use tonight. Now, how they figure out who to put in at what time, I don't know. You know, whether they draw straws or numbers or what. That's but, uh, a coach's decision. <laughs> they've got a lot of inter interchangeable parts there at the uh, running back position. Coleman and Hatfield, I've both seen them, them run, and they've got good speed. Uh, the other backs have got some pretty good quickness. Abe Boyd with a long run there just a minute ago. I'll tell you what, Chuck, we've got uh, the air horn up here with us, and that thing's going to go off again if they score. <laughs> no, it's all right. It just adds to it. I've been in Jackson, Mississippi with the cowbells and the rebel flag, so I can put up with an air horn. And barreling through the middle, number 40, who we failed to mention a little while ago, Chris Strait. Makes it six all, and Pikeville has a chance to take the lead here with the point after conversion drive. the lead seven to six the score with 10 minutes 20 seconds left in the first half of play we'll be back with the pikeville kickoff after this timeout on wprg channel 5 sports eddie deramus set to kick off for the pikeville panthers number 42 Eddie's sure big enough. If he got into it, I think he could sit hey, it a long way. I start to say if he gets his leg into it, <laughs> if he gets all of his leg into it, Jack. 
<laughs> Looks like Shepard and Leslie and also number 29, um, Chad Spurlock back there for Prestonsburg. Pikeville's got a one point lead, seven to six, as we thought this would be a close fought ball game, and it's been a close one and a hard fought one so far. Doremus, the boot is a short one. Coming to one of the upbacks, uh, number 40 for Prestonsburg. That is Robbie Reisner. He takes it out to about the 35 yard line. That's where the Black Cats will start on offense. Ramos got that foot just a little bit too low underneath that football that time, kind of popped it up in the air. Reisner caught it and took it to the 36 is where they'll mark it. First down and 10 for the Black Cats. Thomas Ratliff comes up with the offense. Robbie Reisner and Blake Leslie at the running back positions. Number 29, Chad Spurlock split out here to the left. And nifty little run fooled a couple of people including yours truly the number 17 I think on the no. Blake Leslie number 21 with the carry picks up about five yards number 17 that is Ryan Ortega who came over to help block for Leslie on that play they gave him five yards on Chuck so it'll be second five for the Black Cats Ratliff, high backfield, little shift in motion there. Hand off to Leslie. Leslie hit at the line of scrimmage, squirms forward and gets the first down. Thought they had him for a no gain, but he fought and got six yards out of it. On that extra spin, he got the first down. Blake Leslie on the carry. They say Blake Leslie's got a lot of quickness and that uh, in the open field, he can run as, as quickly as uh, Seth Hyden but uh, just doesn't have the experience right now. And I don't think the Black Cats have, uh, you know, the power in the offensive line right now early in the season that they did last year. First down for the Black Cats by the length of the football. So, so far, Prestonsburg, when they've needed some plays to be made, they have been able to make them on offense. Tell you what, Chuck, that piece is pretty good to brought up here. It is. <laughs> we appreciate that. I want to thank the folks from uh, Mr. Gaddy's and Jerry Tier Cheer for providing the pizzas tonight. Uh, we certainly enjoy the hospitality. Uh, I like to eat, and uh, <laughs> whenever somebody's nice enough to bring me up something to eat, I will definitely put in a good word for them. That boy of mine, I brought him down here, Bill Wilson, uh, him and his buddy down here, Jeremy Dorton. Uh, they, uh, I know they got them a piece or two that while ago. <laughs> We've had a good time down here at the uh, High County Bowl at the uh, W.C. Hamley Athletic Field. I've been calling football down here on the radio and TV for about six years now, and I don't know of a time yet that they haven't uh, taken care of me. You know, if I needed a roster or needed to know something or needed something to drink or whatever, they've always been real nice to me down here at Pico, and we certainly appreciate it. It makes it a lot easier and a lot more fun to do a ball game. Sure does. Sometimes you have to eat in a hurry, but I guess that's part of it. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know if we want to give that one over the air or not. Uh, in the Appalachian Bowl down in uh, Clay County, Whitley County, Mauling, Pike County Central, 55 to nothing. Pike Central's got a bunch of freshmen up there. I think they had something like 25, 26 uh, freshmen up there this year, Chuck, uh, try out for that squad up there. So, I mean, that's a real, real young squad at Pike They've Central. They've got a young year. team. They've got a small team. Last year, they didn't have much team speed. They got a couple of folks, uh, Harris being one of them, number 30, that's got a little bit of speed on that team. But it's going to be a long year for Pike Central as they try to develop a football squad. What few seniors and leaders they did have on the team, a lot of them graduated last year, and it's going to be a learning experience. And if they stick with it uh, a couple of years from now, they're going to have a pretty good football team. But this year, playing a triple-A schedule, it is going to be a tough year for the Hawks, and you've just got to bear with them and support them all you can. Bad pitch out that time by Prestonsburg, and they luck out as it gets knocked out of bounds. Tell you what, Pop was digging for it right here in front of us, but the ball just uh, 
Happened to go out of bounds, so a break for the Black Cats right there. Pitch intended for Robbie Reisner. He never really got a hand on it, and the ball goes out of bounds, and uh, it was knocked around by a couple of players before it went out of bounds. The Black Cats dodged a bullet there because there was a lot of maroon jerseys from Pikeville around that football. Betsy Lane was trailing Paintsville seven to nothing down in the Big Sandy Bowl down in the Paintsville area. Of course, in the nightcap down in the Appalachian Bowl, we got Shelby Valley and Clay County, and that should be a pretty good matchup. Shelby Valley got to have their hands full. Clay County always a good football squad. Sure are those uh, Clay County Tigers over there in football and basketball, of course. Now, what do we have? Uh, encroachment or delay a game here? We got flags all over the field. Ball start. Ball start on the offense. Somebody moved after they got set. Five-yard penalty against the Black Cats. Going to be second and oh boy, 23. Oh, they got it figured second out. All one. right. Uh, somebody, I told you somebody down there has got a calculator. <laughs> I was, I figured up to about 20, and I was starting <laughs> to count the single digits on my fingers. <laughs> second and 23 for the Black Cats. Now what do we got? Unsportsmanlike conduct. Somebody must have said something after the play. Well, it couldn't have been unsportsmanlike conduct because it's only five yards. Well, we're waiting for the signal from the referee. Now they're going to put it back up where it was. Hey, well, we've had a couple of strange uh, calls in these ball games. I'm going to keep my mouth shut until <laughs> they get done with it, and then when they let us know what happened, we'll tell you. <laughs> the referees is still out there, three of them talk at the middle of the field. Well, what do you want to do with this thing? I guess it's early in the season for them, too, Bill. Uh, last week, I kind of stumbled along during that Matewan Bank Classic over there, and Dr. Don was there to bail me out, uh, brought up a couple things about rock and roll and Woodstock, but I was kind of fumbling along there talking about football. and uh, Talking about his Woodstock trip. Huh? Yeah, yeah. He says, I had more fun up there than I did in 1969, Charlie. <laughs> We're still trying to figure this one. I out know too. it, yeah. Uh, like I said, it's early in the season for them too. <laughs> That's for sure. The more you eat, the thirstier you get. Well, now we've got five of them out there uh, trying to figure out exactly what is happening. I think at this point, both coaches are just about ready to say, forget it, just let them go ahead and finish out the play here. Mark the ball right there where it is, boys. Let them <laughs> go with it. They went five yards one way, five yards the other way. How about moving it two and a half yards and <laughs> calling it a day? Let's see. We'll get the call here. Setting penalties. Okay. Had a dead ball foul on Pikeville and a an, uh, false start on Prestonsburg. Offsetting. And a delay of game now going to be called on the referees. <laughs> Gary is, is stood over there with that uh, chain and pole like a pillar of salt. He has not moved while he's waited for all this to go on. So the chain gang doing a good job. Chain gang, I like it. That's all right. We should put on a little Sam Cook working on the chain gang for those <laughs> guys over there moving the markers up and down. Short gain, about uh, three yard carry for Prestonsburg. Going to be a third down and about uh, 20, it looks like. Three yards on the play. Third and oh, 16. Okay. Morris in the backfield at the fullback spot. Blake Leslie at the halfback spot. Got a man in motion. Shepard slot out wide to the left. Ratliff in motion. Looks to pass and he's been pursued. He's in by Weddington lost down. the football and Weddington's got it. Weddington's got him with a score. 
Prestonsburg's Thomas Ratliff was under pressure, rolled out, lost the control of the football, didn't get hit, but lost the football, and Kearney Weddington picks it up, number 24, carries the fumble into the end zone for a Pikeville Panther touchdown. So tonight in this second game, Bill, the defenses have been the one creating the points for both teams. Right. Pick is up and good. Number 79, that is. Don't have the 79 on my roster either, but the number 79 booting it through for Pikeville. It makes it Pikeville 14, Prestonsburg 6. We'll be back with the Pikeville Panther kickoff right after this break on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. Number 88 looks like Cade Cinnamon. Okay, welcome back. Seven minutes, 30 seconds left in the half. Cade Cinnamon, number 88, going to kick off for the Pikeville Panthers. Chuck Scoville, Bill Bevins, and Dr. Don Bevins here for you on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. I'll tell you what, Chuck, that was one heck of an effort by uh, Weddington down there to pick that ball up and, and take it in the end zone last time. He scooped it up at the, off the ground at a, at a run and uh, then made a nice little nifty move on Thomas Ratliff and got it into the end zone. Nice kick by Pikeville. It's number 29, he Chad Spurlock, and he is smacked down at the 25-yard line. Had Pikeville, five Pikeville defenders on top of him, Chuck. Well, I think that last touchdown by the defense may have fired up this Panther team because that was some uh, good hitting going on on the kickoff. 14 to 6 or score. Pikeville out on top, 7-18 left to go in the first half of play. This game is being attended by all kind of media folks other than WPRG. we got six radio stations, a couple other TV stations, and four newspapers here. So uh, this is a big-time sporting event in the state <laughs> of Kentucky. Ratliff under center, three men in the backfield. Morris, Blake Leslie, and... Uh, Pitch out goes to number 29, Spurlock. Spurlock finds a little running room out to about the 35-yard line. Good uh, pick up by Prestonburg that time. Good pitch out. Spurlock uh, just took it rounding in. Good run. Makes it uh, maybe a yard shy of the first down. Second down and less than a yard to go. It'll be second and one. One man out wide left, full backfield behind Ratliff, and that's number 50, Morris, bowling his way, carrying a couple of defenders up to about five yards for the first down. Tell you what, I really got to take my hat off to these kids. A lot of these kids go both ways all game long, Bill, and I tell you, you got to be in some darn good shape, especially early in the season when it's still hot and humid like it is here in eastern Kentucky. You better believe it, because you're going to get hit, and you got to hit, too. <laughs> I mean, you're out there playing defense, chasing the receivers and the running backs all over the field, and they put you in at running back, and you're running the ball trying to <laughs> outrun everybody that's trying to chase you down. And, I mean, you got to be in some awesome shape. Ratliff give off to Leslie. Leslie not in getting any field. room at all, and he's pulled down at the 35, but I think we got a face mask. I, think, back I there. think so. One of the boys grabbed his uh, face mask. I had think him trapped. Be had him trapped in a face mask is going to cause a little problem for Pikeville here. Yep. So well, hurt Pikeville. Are they, like, you're right, Chuck. They had him back there, and uh, they had him trapped, and... Uh, Something they didn't need to do. They had four defenders mm -hmm. around him, and uh, if that one tackler would have missed, there were three others to help him out. One of them just grabbed his face mask. So instead of a big loss, it's going to be a first down for the Black Cats. Right at midfield. Well, believe it or not, the college football season is going to get underway tomorrow, and uh, thank goodness for that since baseball players uh, <laughs> don't look like they're coming back anytime soon. Nebraska and West Virginia start off in the kickoff classic up in uh, New Jersey at the Meadowlands tomorrow to start the college season. Baseball guys not, might not be back right Oh, Ratliff with a handoff, I think, to Shepard in a big hole up the middle, about a 16-yard gain. Mike Shepard on the carry. 
Well, Prestonburg moving the ball right now. Well, Eddie Duramus is coming back in. That middle of the line uh, punched right through by the Black Cats, and Duramus coming back in to try to plug the hole. Tell you what, Prestonsburg uh, could have been shocked a little bit by that defensive score by uh, Kearney Weddington, but they come right back out here and uh, punch that ball straight down the field on Pikeville, and they're uh, starting to get near scoring position as well. Right, they're right on uh, Pikeville's, uh, what, 35-yard line down there. Give off to Shepard, a hole over the left to guard, a pickup of about seven yards inside the 30, inside the 25 to about the 24. And Powell wants timeout. I see the coaches uh, calling. They're trying to get timeout on the field right now. They want to talk about it here. I think they're going to put some of those big guys in in the middle of the line there. Number 75, Justin Harris, checking in uh, just after Doremus uh, put came into the lineup. Well, Don, do you want to take a break or do you want to keep it here with 4.55 remaining in the first half? Take a break. We'll go ahead and take a quick timeout here on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. Okay, back to live action here at Hambly Athletic Complex. Second down, two yards to go. The Pikeville Panthers, 25-yard line is where the Black Cats sit right now. It'll be second and two, Chuck. Black Cats are definitely uh, on the move. Ratliff keeper, man, that was a quick keeper. He just took the ball. Sneak. As soon as he got it in his <laughs> hands, he was off running right up the uh, gut, and I think he got enough for the first down. Well, uh, strike or no strike, there's going to be plenty of action uh, this coming Tuesday night up at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Dr. Don said the Rolling Stones are going to be there, and uh, I think he's going to be right there with them. I uh, think if he's the Stones got, are within 500 miles. You know the doctor's going to be there. I think he's got front row seats, doesn't he? He probably does. <laughs> as many Stones concerts as he's been to, they ought to let him on backstage. <laughs> I will be there at Riverfront on August the 30th on Tuesday night to see the Rolling Stones. Did you mention uh, the Meadowlands? Uh, where the sports arena is there uh -huh. in New Jersey, New York City, and that's where uh, saw the Rolling Stones there last Monday night. As a matter of fact, right after the Woodstock show, well, we've got a flag the play, on the field. Yep. Well, I know both sides have got legitimate points in the baseball players' strike, but I can't feel too sorry for either groups when uh, when a bench warmer is making a million dollars a year, and you've got people out here that have got college degrees and people out here that are saving lives and protecting lives and, and uh, making you know twenty five thirty thousand dollars a year and can't pay all their bills it's hard for hard for me to feel sorry for hard to have sympathy for <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, hard for me to feel sorry for the owners too if somebody can afford 180 million dollars for a baseball team they're not exactly hurting are they <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know if they come back fine if not I'll be more than happy to watch minor league baseball put on those double A AA and triple A franchises I'll watch the young kids play it's the sport I love. It's not the uh, the class or the major league uh, level of it. I saw ESPN advertise Jordan playing tomorrow on, on, on there. Number 50, Morris with the carry. He might have got a yard or two. We watched the uh, Little League World Series. It was on today. Sure, I have just <laughs> as much fun watching, you know, 9, 10, 11-year-olds play ball. It's, it's the sport and the competition that I enjoy. I may be in the minority, but if uh, all the different pro athletes went on strike it wouldn't bother me in the least if they put on the you know minor league and high school and college football and baseball and that kind of thing I'd be just as happy watching that you know as it comes a time where enough is enough and I don't think anybody a movie actor or a ball player or anybody's worth six seven million dollars a year a lot of money well we've got another flag what's going on here more motion or movement Tell you what, the flags are starting to fly now, Chuck. Prestonsburg was moving the ball pretty well there, Bill, but uh, no. delay a game delay on the game. Black Cats. They had a second and 12. Now they're going to have a second and 17. They're going the wrong way here on this drive. Had the ball inside the 20. Now they're back out to the 29-yard line. They've got to go all the way to the 12 for the first down. It's a young offense, though, and these kind of things are going to happen to you. Shepard in motion, Ratliff under center, only one back in the backfield. That's Morris. He's in to block, and uh, Weddington after Ratliff, and Ratliff not going to have a chance to throw the football. He's going to de be decked out of bounds at Big the 37-yard line. He's out there near the – they backed him up all the way to the, about the 40-yard line, Chuck. I think he lost about another eight yards. That's going to be, uh, let's see, second and third and about 
125 now. Talking about that salary cap again, Chuck, I was listening to uh, one of the uh, sports channels the other night, and it said, but uh, I think on the average they were making like what, uh, one point something million a year, you mm -hmm. know. That's the guys that don't get a lot of playing time and everything. And, and one of the big arguing points is, well, we only get a three or four year career on average. Well, heck, if I could make four million dollars <laughs> in four years, I'd have plenty left in the <laughs> bank. I could go back and retire or I could coach baseball at a high school or junior high level or go work in Walmart or something. You know, uh, with that kind of money on a four year career, I wouldn't be hurting. And Ratliff being sacked inside Black Cat territory. Man, he lost another bundle about 14 yards there, Bill. I'll tell you what, they've all Got him back out to the about right at midcourt. We're going to mark the ball at the 49 of Pikeville. Ratliff uh, actually went down on the other side of that line. But, so this uh, is some fourth and 38 now. So this is some kind of defense that Pike was uh, <laughs> putting on back there. Well, Hillard Howard wanted some time there to talk over the defense. He put a whole new group in on that, on that line, and they've done a heck of a job. And uh, Prestonsburg, instead of having first and 10 at the 12-yard line, they got to punt it away. And near block, he gets the kick away. It comes down to Brent Coleman, number 25, here on the near side. He trips and falls about the 20-yard line. Good kick, go. Yeah, he got it away and got a pretty good yardage on it, and Coleman stopped at the 20. That's where Pikeville will take over with two minutes and 30 seconds left in the half. The Panthers with a 14-6 lead. Pikeville did what they wanted to, though. They stopped uh, the momentum of Prestonburg because Prestonburg was definitely threatened. They sure did, and uh, I think the inexperience of the Black Cats showed on offense right there. Ratliff didn't get enough time to set up a pass. And uh, the receivers just weren't open downfield for him. And uh, Prestonsburg going to have to develop some type of passing game uh, to be successful early in the season on offense while those uh, other folks get some experience. Last year, Prestonsburg didn't have to pass too much. I think this year they're going to have to pass a little bit more than last year because they don't have that powerhouse backfield with all that speed in it like they did last year. Uh, I believe that was Hatfield getting tripped up there up the middle that time. Picked up about three yards. <coughs> Second and seven. Hatfield is in there with Coleman and uh, number 40 straight in the backfield for Pikeville. Everybody in pretty close. And who's got the ball? Coleman. I thought Pruitt was keeping the thing. He dove into the middle of the line but pitched out to Coleman as he was falling into the middle of the line. And Coleman up near the first down marker. I believe he got it. I think they'll mark it just a little bit past that marker over there, Chuck. He took it around the end. <clears throat> so the Panthers with a good play there. Looked like Pruitt was going to keep it straight up the middle, but he dished it off at the last second to Coleman. Jonathan Pruitt's daddy, Jim Pruitt. We see him quite a bit down there in downtown Pikeville and a real fine fella and always friendly to talk to. Looks like Eddie DeRama is going to check into the backfield. Brent Coleman goes out. I wonder if they're going to run a reverse to DeRamus here, Bill. <laughs> 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 they tried a, a quick uh, slant play with DeRamus before, but he never had a chance to get he, going. He didn't get, have a chance to get up the middle. Well, they're saying he did not get the first down. It'll be third and one. Third and less than a yard. Looks like about six inches. May go with the sneak right up the middle. Yeah, I'd just go ahead and go for the first down. And, oh, a mix-up in the backfield again. DeRamus gets the ball and busts through there, though. DeRamus picked him up about uh, 12, collided, and it was like, give me the ball and let me run with it. And uh, he just smashed through the line there uh, after he was staggered there in the handoff. Hey, Chuck, that time he was definitely <laughs> going up the middle. He didn't go around the end that time. <laughs> He got the ball turned around right up the middle. He went. <laughs> Looked like a busted play, but uh, Doremus busted through the line there and picked up the first down and then some. Turned out good for the Pikeville Panthers, though. Showed a little burst of quickness there, too. If he had been able to maintain his footing, it would have been interesting to see uh, how quick Eddie Doremus could motor up the field. We've got time out on the court, Dr. Don. So uh, you want to keep it right here then? Okay, we're just going to keep it right here. We've just got a little over a minute left to go in the uh, first half of play. Pikeville on top, 14 to uh, six. Uh, Bill Bevins, uh, Chuck Scoville up here, our play-by-play -play man. Likes this football, of course I do too. 
Of course, uh, Rambo. We'll have Rambo this season, too, Chuck. I like any kind of sports. <laughs> if Don says, Chuck, we're going to go call a, a, a beach volleyball tournament or a soccer tournament, I say, hey, yeah, go for it, you know. <laughs> I don't know a lot about hockey and uh, too much about horse racing, but most any sport I'd be more than happy to, to, to get out there and do. So I, I just enjoy it. You know, this is the spirit of everything and the competition. I called the doctor man this morning, Chuck. I said, hey, bub, you got anybody going down there and doing that game with Chuck tonight? I said, uh, I'd like to go down there and do that. We'll, we'll go down there and watch that pie candy bowl. said, sure, come on down, buddy. <laughs> Don said, as bad as Charlie <laughs> did last week, he needs some help this week. <laughs> so... so. But I'm glad I could be here with you guys. I'll tell you what, I've enjoyed myself. Well, tonight. we would have been uh, happy to have you last night. Uh, we were down in McGoffin County, and boy, they built a, a fine new complex and stadium down there as we're back to live action here. Pikeville with the football. Coleman. Give off to Coleman. Coleman finds plenty of running room up to the 41-yard line of Prestonsburg. And Hillard Howard fired up. He liked that play. I'll tell you what, Chuck, with a minute left to play, they got uh, time to uh, get this ball down there. Maybe... Uh, they could get him a big break running in or at least get uh, close enough maybe for a uh, field goal attempt here before uh, first half ends. Sure do. And uh, what I was going to say is that Founders Day is going on in McGoffin County, August the 31st through September the 4th. Next Friday night, Dr. Don will be down there filming the Miss McGoffin County pageant. And next Saturday at 1 o'clock, the Founders Day Parade is going to be going on down in Salyersville. And WPRG will be down there with their cameras live and direct. Got a man wide open. Oh, Ooh. Pruitt had his man right in the hands. Ben Wagner, number 28, and he didn't hold on to it. I'll tell you what, I believe he slipped out there because he was sort of falling yep. down, looked like, when the ball was coming. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you what, he had a chance to grab it, just couldn't uh, get his hands on it, round it. Just Hard to right concentrate through. when you're losing your footing, but that ball was beautifully thrown by Jonathan Pruitt, right on the money. Well, maybe that uh, rain did make a couple little slick spots out there. The guys look like they got the short cleats on tonight. That may be a little bit of a problem. Wide open on this end, carried Cinnamon, and he turned one way, and the ball went the other. Looks like Cinnamon turned toward the middle of the field, and the ball went to the outside. That's another situation where uh, Cinnamon was open for the reception. All right. Might have lost it in these lights, too, Chuck. I don't know. It looked like he kind of maybe lost it in the lights a little bit. I tell you what, I'm glad Dr. Don was waving both arms up here when we were doing the interviews because I had a hard time seeing him looking <laughs> back up here to the press box with all these lights shining down on me on the field. It'll be third and 10, 30 seconds left to go. Pro back to pass, got some time, got a man in on him. He's got some room up the middle, and it closes down quick, and he's sacked behind the line at the 45-yard line. we got a flag down. Somebody up here yelling for a Hail Mary here with 22 seconds left. Said, yeah, right back, throw the bomb, man, throw the bomb. I don't want to think about any Hail Marys. Doug Flutie beat my University of Miami Hurricanes with one of those passes at the very end of the ball game way back, I think, in 1984. I think he threw it like something like 60 yards, man. Everybody was going after yeah. it. Yeah. Six man on the line of the offense, the penalty de declined, well, Chuck, and it's fourth I've, down. I've got a tape on the uh, greatest sports moments, and that uh, that play is in that tape. Greatest sports moments well, of all time. Well, it been a great sports moment for Boston <laughs> College, but as a Hurricane fan, I was less than thrilled, I'll tell you that. I said, oh, I don't believe they're going to lose this ball game like this. <laughs> Fourth and 15, last, probably last play. Hand off to Hatfield. Hatfield with some running room. Bust ahead. He's got the first down, and they've got two seconds left, and I think they've got a timeout call. So they got time for one more play. I'll tell you what, nice run by the kid with two seconds left to go. Chuck, got two seconds. What do you do right here, man? <laughs> Throw it up. <laughs> <laughs> All the way down, go all the way. Oh, Last play of the half, Hatfield, Hatfield. with the Hatfield picks up about eight yards. It's immaterial as the half runs out to score. Pikeville 14, Prestonsburg 6. We'll be back after this timeout on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. Okay, welcome back here to the Hamley Athletic Complex, Pikeville High School, Chuck Scoville, Bill Bevins, and Dr. Don Bevins. Uh, we're ready for the third quarter to play. Bill, Pikeville with a 14 to six lead. Pikeville getting ready to kick off. Uh, they played some good uh, football there in that first half. 
Of course, Prestonburg, I'll tell you what, this thing's uh, everything we uh, thought it would be at 14-6 to 6 right now. Of course, it's still up for grabs. Two good teams, two of the top teams in this uh, region. Prestonburg had an opportunity in the second quarter to score and uh, lost the football. Cade Cinnamon, number 88, to boot it away for Pikeville. Kind of short kick, high up in the air, picked up by one of the up backs, number 40. I think it's Robbie Reisner. And uh, the ball taken to the 34-yard line. That's where the Black Cats will take over from there. 14 to 6 to score. Earlier tonight, if you're tuning in to us late, it was Montgomery County uh, in a big win over uh, Belfry Pirate Squad. Belfry had a uh, few turnovers in that, and that hurt them early, Chuck. Yeah, I was real impressed with Montgomery County. They showed a lot of intensity on defense, and that offense uh, did a good job. Uh, they were outsized all the way across the line and uh, just able to outfight uh, Belfry. And Belfry, of course, like you said, with those turnovers, really, really shot themselves in the foot. I'll tell you what, we've got a uh, timeout called by the Black Cats, so uh, let's go ahead and take the break, Dr. Don, while we've got timeout. You're watching and listening to WPRG TV 5 Sports. All right, we're back at the W.C. Hamley uh, Athletic Field. As the uh, second, third quarter just got underway, Prestonburg caught a real quick timeout there, uh, Chuck. I believe uh, Bill Letton and saw something he wanted to get straightened out with his black cat. They got Ryan Ortega split out here wide to the left. I think Prestonburg wants to take advantage of this offensive possession, and I think there was a little bit of confusion with that young offense there. They're looking for Ortega. Ortega open, gets tangled up with a the defender there, number 22, Josh Baroni, but uh, cost a little bit overthrown. He worked, that was a good throw for that boy, though. Uh, that covered a bunch of yards that time. He got a pretty good arm, arm on him. Ratliff, a veteran quarterback, runs the option real well. Doesn't pass a whole lot. I guess, of course, Prestonsburg last year with that defense and the running backs they had, they didn't have to pass is a whole lot. Is he a senior this year, Chuck? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is his, I think, third year under center for uh, Prestonsburg. In fact, I think he played quite a bit as a uh, freshman, so he's been around a while in that backfield. Handoff and over right tackle is... Uh, It's at number 40. That's number 80 in there on that tackle, Chip Templeton for uh, Pikeville there, getting a uh, uh, bomb that pile in there. Uh, number 40, Reisner with the carry. Not much of a gain, third and eight. Closer to third and nine, only about a yard and a half pickup on that one. Pikeville rotates their defense, uh, look like a situational type defense, Bill. They've got the big guys in on the first down or two, smaller, quicker linemen in on passing situations, and uh, a little jumping on the line, look like number 40 for Pikeville roaring across the line. Did he go off on his own, or was he drawn? Chris Strait. I think he may have been drawn off. Let's see. No, they'll, it'll go against Pikeville, so they'll mark it off against the Panthers. You know, Hillard Howard pointing the other way, thought his man was drawn off. I thought he was drawn off. I thought I saw a little bit of movement on the line, but guess not. So that moves the ball up five yards, gives the Black Cats a little bit more uh, opportunity to make this. Third and four instead of third and nine. Ortega split out here to the left. Ratliff. Keeper, he's got some room. He's going to have the first down and then some still on his feet as he crosses a lateral. the field. Laterals out to uh, Shepard, and Shepard picks up a couple of more yards I'll to about the 44-yard line. I'll tell you what, you don't see that a whole lot, Chuck. He, he ran the ball up here for about 25 yards and saw the runner behind him. He just laddled it right back to him and picked up about five more. You got me so excited there. The ball marked <laughs> on the 34, not the 44. Nice play there. For the saw one of those Black plays cats. last year by Ratliff. Uh, I think it was going to either Hyden or the other back that they had in there after Seth Hyden got hurt. And I tell you, my memory is terrible. I've seen the Black Cats like five, six times last year. But uh, Ratliff did a, something similar in one of the ball games where he was running upfield, just about to get hit, and pitched it out to a man that was right alongside of him. Hand off to Shepard. He goes about a yard. That's about it. Tough running over left tackle there. 
Chris Strait's name's been called several times on defense tonight. Been in 40. There. He's been in there on a bunch of those tackles. Not a big kid. It looked like he's playing that linebacker spot. But he's been covering some ground for the Pikeville Panthers. I'll tell you what, Chuck, you got some size up front for those Panthers. Harris in there and Doremus up front, 75 and number uh, 42. They kind of plug the holes and whatever leaks through straight in the linebackers try to fill. At the middle they go once again, this time over the right guard. Ratliff, the ball carrier, picked up uh, maybe three yards, third down, and it looks like about a five situation. Third and five, he gained three on that play. 9-14 left third period, Pikeville clinging to a 14-6 lead. That's what we need to get you, Bill. See that T-shirt <laughs> down there? I'm Doc's little bro. <laughs> yeah. Nice run that time by Ratliff. He goes all the way inside the 20 to about the 14-yard line. Real nice run. And a flag down, though, upfield around the 30. And uh, normally when you got a flag upfield, you got an illegal block or a hold. It's going to come back, I think. Pressensburg already marching back that way, so it is going to be against the Black Cats. And Bill Letton is not a bit happy. He's coming out on the field to argue on this one. got me confused. I think one referee is going to say it was an inadvertent flag. They were going to call six men on the line of scrimmage. First down, the, First down Black, the Black Cats are not going to be penalized. So the referee, I guess, nearest to the play overruled the referee who threw the flag. So no wonder Bill Letton was excited out there. Uh, <laughs> I guess he thought they had a legal play, a legitimate play, and uh, he was absolutely right. The referee picked the flag up, and Pac Pat's got a first down at the 14-yard line of Pikeville. It's power running straight ahead by Thomas Ratliff there, following a blocker inside the 10 to about the 6. Now we've got some extracurricular activity. Has uh, got some boys uh, just about to get into it a little bit out there. Got a flag thrown at the 15-yard line. Let's see who this one's going to be on. Number 61 for Prestonsburg, one of the folks involved in that. That was uh, on the defense, Jason Spencer, number 61 of Prestonsburg, the receiving player of the personal foul. the five to the four and that's where Prestonsburg will take over first and goal to go after that personal foul penalty. So we caught the tail end of that one where the Prestonsburg player trying to I guess defend himself. I think the first to punch thrown by Pikeville and Pikeville call for the penalty. Michael Shepard fighting his way down to about the one yard line. Well, Eddie DeRamus didn't get much of a break, Bill. Looks like they're getting ready to put him back in there. The coach grabbed him by the jersey and says, come on over here. They want some size on that line. <laughs> Short yarded situation. They want that beef up front. Prestonsburg sets up too quick. Pikeville doesn't have a time to get DeRamus in. Ratliff on a keeper tries to for the goal line. I don't think he made don't, it. Don't think so. Got stacked up just in front of that plane. And uh, five new players checking in for the Pikeville Panthers. Look like they're going to hit on the uh, offensive, I mean, excuse me, defensive line. No, it looks like uh, three backs are coming out, so they're going to stack about an eight-man line up against Prestonsburg. Looks like the Black Cat's going to try to run this one in third and a yard, less than a yard. It has to be off the post-up goal line. 
Panthers with the goal line defense in there. Third and less than a yard. Black Cats on the one yard line. And into the end zone, Robbie Reisner, number 40 for a Black Cat touchdown. Tell you what, he couldn't have made it by much, but uh, just has to cross the plane. Cuts that lead of Pikels down to two, 14 to 12, and the Black Cats probably will go for two here. I'm sure they'd like to tie this thing up here with a two point, point conversion. They're going to go for two. They've got Shepard. It looks like Shepard, Morris, and Reisner in the backfield. Ratliff into the end zone. He's got the two-point conversion. We've got a tie score, Bill. And with that tie score, it's 14-14. to 14, And we'll be back with the Prestonsburg kickoff after this break on WPRG Sports. Back to live action, Ricky Johnson, number 75, debuted away for Prestonsburg, kind of a low line drive kick, rolling on the ground, takes Brent Coleman all the way back to the three yard line, got a couple of blockers out in front of him, turns the corner and is uh, smacked down about the 17 yard line. Good defensive coverage by the Black Cats. They'll keep the Panthers inside their own 20, Bill. Good kick by the Black Cats. He uh, kept it low and uh, got it on the ground. It started bouncing, uh, took a good bounce for Prestonsburg. Hit back to Brent Coleman way back there. He ran it out about 10 or 15 yards to get a little breathing room for these Pikeville Panthers here. Mike Shepard, another one that's going both ways for the Black Cats down there on the tackle for Prestonsburg. Got a tie ball game, exactly seven minutes, eight seconds remaining here in the third period of play. So, uh, got personal no penalty. foul. Against Prestonburg this yep. time. I'm going to mark this one up 15 yards the other way. Going to give Pikeville a lot more room to operate in. Out to the 33 and a half, almost 34 yard line. Now this may be one reason why these teams don't play each other every year. <laughs> you know, uh, they used to get into it pretty good a few years ago, and it's kind of like the Miami Dolphins and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers <laughs> playing. Every time the Dolphins and the Bucks play, there's a fight. And they had they quit playing for about seven years. They played for the first time in a long time this preseason. They got into another fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Hatfield with a big hole and he's off to the races and finally pulled down from behind by Ryan Ortega inside Black Cat territory about the 43-yard line. I'll tell you what, if he had got by Ortega, he was gone. Hatfield's got some good quickness. He's a rangy kid. Six-foot, 185-pound senior. Of course, Ryan Ortega, we've heard that name in, in uh, Black Cat basketball down there. Those Black Cats had a real small team last year, but man, they like to fire up those threes. Pruitt with a keeper, nothing going there. He might have got a yard there to about the 42. Probably about second and nine, I believe. Ronnie Ford out there bringing a new pigskin out on the field. Hey, as long as I've been covering Pikeville football, Ronnie Ford's been there on the sidelines. Helps him out a whole lot up here, doesn't he? Sure does. Always uh, making sure they got a clean football or uh, he'll help fix a helmet or a jersey or a some water, ju or water jug. Yeah. Or Do anything he can to help this Pikeville Panther team. He loves this football team. Brent Coleman, Coleman spinning and he's got a hole. He Coleman creates go. an opening. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> was all second effort by Brent Coleman. He got the hole and uh, got hit twice going downfield, spun out of both tacklers' uh, arms and scored the touchdown for Pikeville. 42-yard touchdown run for Brent Coleman makes it 20 to 14, the Panthers. And I'm trying to find my pin here so I can keep track of these scores. Out for the extra point for Pikeville. It was good. Number 79. That was, I don't have number 79, but uh, the kick is good. And with that score, we'll go ahead and take a timeout here on WPRG Channel 5 Sports.
Okay, welcome back to the Hambly Athletic Complex. Pikeville ready to kick off. That's Cade Cinnamon to kick off. Leslie, Shepard, and Spurlock, the three men back for the Black Cats. Chuck, I had a feeling it's just a matter of time before uh, that Coleman kid broke one. And, uh, he made a couple spin moves down there a while ago and broke that for about 30 yards down there to score on that. Blake Leslie with the football. Another flag on the field, Chuck. Yep. We've had a bunch of those thrown tonight. Normally on a run back, it's going to be a hold or a clip on the receiving team. Let's see what happens. Blake Leslie got the football. Mike Shepard touched it initially and then uh, let it roll to Leslie. I think this was going against the Black Cats. Well, we got a real good answer when we asked uh, who the kicker was, number 79. What'd they say, Diego from Brazil? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> There's a good song out by Motorhead going down to Rio, heading to Brazil or something like that. It's off that 1916 album that uh, we used to play. And uh, <laughs> it's a good, uh, good, you know, fun loving party song because Rio, like one of the party capitals of the world, they've got those beautiful beaches and uh, clubs and things down there. Uh, Warm the all one. year round down there. It's all the poverty away from the beach. Club. Yeah, yeah. Penalty went against uh, Prestonburg, Chuck. They moved it back 15, so a big one. So uh, I'll tell you what, Prestonburg uh, got some poor field position right now. They're way back there in their own uh, end zone. Pressburg way back there, like you said, Bill, the 12-yard line, so a long way to go for Ratliff and company, and uh, that may fire that Pikeville defense up. Let's see if the Black Cats can uh, answer the call. And a hole in the middle, Ratliff on a keeper, and he's got uh, close to the first down, past the 20-yard line up to around the 22. Picked up some good yards there with that quarterback sneak. Ratliff's a nifty little runner. He's got pretty good speed. Good option quarterback. He can run, he can throw. Let's see, I believe uh, I believe they're going to have a measurement here, Chuck. Yep. An official timeout for a measurement here. So we'll keep it right here during this measurement here. Very we'll close. Find out. I think they've got it, though. Nope, nope. He likes about a foot. Yeah, see, that was that's, that shows I can't see very well at an angle from the way I'm looking at it over <laughs> here. Looks like that ball was there, but... Uh, just a tad short. They don't have far to go, that's for sure. Second down, way less than a yard, about six inches to go for the first down. I'll tell you what we need to do is uh, get us one of these small dirigibles or blimps uh, for WPRG so we can kind of hover over the stadium <laughs> and we'll have a perfect view of the football. We can tell you whether it's the first down or not real quick. <laughs> Well, they got more than enough for the first down on that play. Looked like they got about five or six on it. Let's see who the ball carrier was. Mike Shepard. He's been the workhorse out of that backfield tonight. He's got about three yards, maybe four. Got it the first down for the Black Cats. They'll move it out there to about that uh, 27, 28 yard line. So it'll be uh, first and 10. Quick hitter over the left, uh, right side, excuse me, and uh, that was Ratliff with the carry. Picked up about four yards. We've got uh, two big boys. I believe that's Harrison Ramos checking back in, Chuck. Piper does a lot of rotation on offense and defense. They shuffle those backs in and out of there, shuffle the defensive linemen, the linebackers in and out. Of course, when you got that kind of depth, it keeps your folks a little fresher and uh, especially the guys that are going both ways it's always helpful to get them out three or four plays get them a breather All right don't want to keep Dr. Ron man too busy down there on the <laughs> sidelines especially this early in the season they'll build building some of that endurance as the season goes on Ratliff back to pass quick hitter over the middle to Ortega right in his hands and he drops the football about the 38 yard line I think he heard some footsteps, three defenders all around him I there. Believe, I believe so. He made the quick step uh, to the outside and then cut back inside. Good play, but he just couldn't hang on to the uh, pigskin. 
Ratliff tonight uh, has been putting the ball pretty close to on the money, and uh, the receiver's just not holding on. You can't fault Thomas Ratliff when you look at the statistic page tomorrow morning as far as the passing game. It's been the receivers that have not been catching the football. Ratliff up under center. Ortega split out wide to the left. A little movement in the backfield. We got a flag, and uh, Ratliff's going to trip down for a loss about the 25 yard line but that may be immaterial because I think we've got a penalty and Pikeville's bench already saying decline it. There's a flag down on the play. I think the halfback moved uh, out of a set formation before the ball was snapped. So it'll be fourth and six and uh, Prestonburg will have to find it away here. Pot will decline it. Now, it didn't matter either way there. Prestonsburg would have lost five yards, and it looks like they lost five on the hit to Ratliff about the 25. Black Cat's going to have to kick it away here. Pikeville should get pretty good field position. They've got a couple of men waiting about their own 45-yard line to pick up the kick. That's Coleman back there, I believe, along with, uh, can't tell, the other boy back there. Cade Cinnamon. Good kick. Comes Drives Coleman. Coleman back to the 40. Coleman got a little running room around the right corner. Got a couple of blockers. Nobody he's out there to get him. I believe Shepard, he's gone. the only no. one left. Shepard just waits for him and brings him down at the 10-yard line. That's so about the only a, thing Shepard could do. About a 50-yard return for uh, Coleman. Flag down. May have roughing the punter on the other end of the field here when the flag's thrown that far back. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> Yeah, from the kicker. It's just where the flag was thrown, Bill, way back there where the guy kicked the ball, and I was figuring that would be what it was. And uh, heck of a turn by Coleman, but I'll tell you, uh, tell you what, it all uh, went for naught as uh, Prestonburg will get the ball back. They may have enough for the first down with that roughing the punter. If it's a 15-yarder, they only needed 12 for the first down. That'll be the first down. It'll be first and 10, right around the 40-yard uh, line. So a big break there for the Black Cats because Brent Coleman had a great kick return and Pikeville was all set up ready to punch that thing in again at the 10-yard line. He returned that thing about 50 yards. They set up a nice little set of blockers out here on the right side. There was one defender they had to take care of and then Shepard just stood his ground at the 10-yard line and waited for Coleman to come to him. Ratliff up under center, gives off to Shepard. Shepard trying to get around the left tackle, finding a little bit of a hole, picked up about three, four tough yards there to about the 45-yard line. Eddie Dramus out of number 70. Uh, let's see if we can get that number for you real quick. Ross Childers checks in. like Eddie may have picked up a cramp in the leg as he's trying to shake off a little limp over here on the sideline. Very normal thing to happen in the heat of summer football. Get those cramps in the calves and thighs. Blake Leslie picked up about two yards, making a third down three for the Black Cats. I tell you what, we've been standing up here all night now. We might have a cramp in that leg. My lower back's still sore from last night. We had a long ball game last night down in uh, McGoffin County. That ball game took over three hours to complete because uh, McGoffin County, those Hornets like to throw the football, and when the pass is caught and the chains are moved, it stops the clock, and if the pass takes a long caught, time, an incomplete pass stops the clock. <laughs> We had a good time down there. We want to thank all those folks once again for being so good to us down there. And you have certainly got a beautiful football site to play on down there and something the whole community of Salyersville can be proud of. Oh, fumble by the Black Cats, but picking pick it up is Ryan Ortega. And Ortega gets inside the Pikeville Panther 30-yard line, and we've got a late hit maybe on number 44 for Pikeville. That is Ben Ramsey. about that one Chuck you may have said something I it wasn't didn't look like too much of a late hit he just had the guy by the ankles and what damage you're gonna do uh, when you're both on the ground so I don't know
wasn't like there was any spearing or late hitting going on. They were both already on the ground, and all uh, Ramsey did was have hold of uh, number 22. Ortega's ankles. Number 22 got him, but the other boy was going for him, and they just uh, all hit the ground at the same time. That's what it looked like from up here anyway. We've got time out, so let's go ahead and take a break, Dr. Don. Third may be a Friday, too. All right, we're back to action. Thomas Ratliff, the quarterback, has got it. He didn't decide who he was going to give it to. I think he may have kept it. Well, that's a dangerous play there, Bill. Both of them going side by side, and uh, it, it, kind of a play where Ratliff can either keep it or give it off. I believe he kept it that time. I tell you, you take a big hit there with your hands kind of out extended and you could lose the football but Ratliff kept it and uh, took it down to the four lose the football or hand either one <laughs> <laughs> 21 to 14 Robbie and, uh, Reisner running side by side with Ratliff there on that play Prestonburg definitely threatened here to put uh, six or seven more on the scoreboard Ratliff the keeper once again and is he into the end zone yes he crosses the plane touchdown Prestonsburg just barely got it across makes it to 21 to 20 so the black cats fighting right back in this one Chuck this one's been uh, everything we thought it would be these two teams hammering away back and forth see some good defense in spurts and some good offense in spurts these two teams pretty evenly matched looks like the black cats I believe we're going to go for two, two. yeah Trying for the two-point conversion in the lead right here. Well, that's my kind of call. Go for the win. Ratliff oh, is going to be decked. No way. Ooh, down at the two-yard line. Good pursuit on the Pikeville Panthers there. Number 24, Kern Weddington. Also number 62, Ricky Whitehead over there to stop that play. Makes it 21 to 20. 33 seconds left in the period. Pikeville about ready to kick off. Lots of things going on tonight. Of course, earlier in the evening, the Pike County Central Hawks were defeated in the opening game of the Appalachia Bowl down in Clay County, down in Manchester. They were beaten by Whitley County, 55 to nothing. Clay County and Shelby Valley in the nightcap in uh, the opening game. Uh, the last score that we heard was Betsy Lane was trailing Paintsville, 7 to nothing. Don't know what the final score in that ball game was. Cumberland and Hazard were tied up 0-0. A couple of Mountain Class A powers going at it early in the season. That ought to be a pretty good one. Cumberland and Hazard, that sounds like a pretty good matchup over there, Chuck. Those Redskins and uh, the Bulldogs of Hazard over there. I heard Cumberland's got a freshman or a sophomore quarterback that is just uh, out of this world. They said that the college uh, scouts are already looking at the kid. Mm. Cade Cinnamon, one of the upbacks, catches the kickoff, and he's up to about the 37-yard line for Pikeville. So Pikeville has pretty good field position. Well, they kept the ball away from Brent Coleman on that kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> Coleman must be known as the rocket around here. He's the one that's shown me the most speed out of the backfield tonight, Bill. He's had a couple tonight. Uh, of course, that last big run buying was nullified up there by the penalty. Roughing the uh, kicker call up there. I asked the coach over at Allen Elementary, I said, well, when you time these boys in the 40, I'd like you to time me. He says, I don't have a sundial with me today. <laughs> <laughs> Brent Coleman, spin and move, picks up about 15 yards there on the carry to inside the Black Cat side of the field of the 48-yard line of uh, Prestonsburg. I'll tell you what, Chuck, this kid's just a sophomore. What's he going to do when he's a senior? <laughs> He busts a lot of tackles just spinning around like he does and uh, able to keep his feet after those spin moves and uh, head right on upfield. And he's broken a lot of tackles on his own second effort tonight. Hatfield straight up and uh, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And that's the end of the third period with a score of Pikeville 21, Prestonsburg 20. We'll be back after this break on Channel 5 Sports. We're back.
back for the, the for the fourth quarter, and let's see. Pitewa has the ball, but let's see. I believe we've got timeout called <laughs> when, right when, before they started, Chuck. Well, I guess since they're going to take a timeout, <laughs> we'll go ahead and take another break here on WPRG Sports, give our sponsors a chance to tell you about uh, what they've got going on. I don't believe Jonathan Pruitt liked what he saw. <laughs> Okay, back to live action here. Start of the fourth period. No time's gone off the clock. As soon as Pikeville came out, Bill, they didn't like what they saw and took a timeout. Hand off to Coleman. Coleman, quick hitter over left tackle, picks up about seven yards, maybe, well, let's see, about six is where they're going to mark it at the Prestonsburg Black Cat 43-yard line. That may be the strategy of uh, Coach Howard this uh, fourth and final quarter, Chuck. They've... Uh, of course, uh, this thing, they've just got the one-point lead just to try to run it up the middle, take some time off, uh, and see if they can uh, keep it on the ground and uh, get the score here. See if they can move this ball. Pruitt give off to number 20. I think it's Abe Boyd, and Boyd going absolutely nowhere. Maybe got a half a yard. No hole there for him to run through, Bill. No. Black Cat's up on that line. They stopped him. Picked up two or three. It'll be uh, fourth and four here. Well, is Pikeville going to punt it away or are they going to keep it? They've got a whole bunch of new guys coming in there. And I think they're going to kick it away. Looks like Pruitt's going to come off on the sideline here. Ball right around that 42-yard line. Fourth down play, number 89, Adam Minix going to punt it away for Pikeville. <coughs> Got time to kick it and gets good a pretty kick. good kickoff. Oh, oh Tega. He almost lost that one. Falls on it at the 12-yard line. Went right through his hands, and uh, he just fell on top of it. Real smart thing to do in that situation. <laughs> sure was. Nobody back there except Ortega and a bunch of Pikeville Panthers. At least Prestonsburg will retain possession of the ball first and 10 at the 12-yard line. Long way to go for Thomas Ratliff and company. Eddie Dramas back in there. They're down by one point, 21 to 20 the score. The Panthers in the lead. So it'll be Prestonburg ball uh, starting around their, uh, that 11 yard line way back there. Ratliff has Ortega split out wide, gives off second man through. That's Shepard. Shepard up past the 15 to about the 16 yard line. Got about five. Tell you what, Prestonsburg may not have the breakaway speed out of the backfield that they had last year with Seth Hyden and uh, may not have the, the true power that they had. I'm trying to think of who the fullback's name was. I keep thinking of DeRosset, but I know there was another kid back there in the backfield. But uh, Shepard and, uh, and Leslie and Reisner have done a pretty good job in, in that backfield tonight. Nothing fancy, but they've uh, picked up some yardage for Prestonsburg. Done a real good job. Offense not what you'd call explosive, but they've been pretty competent tonight, at least for the Black Cats. Playing a pretty good football team here in the Pikeville Panthers. They've scored three touchdowns, and uh, the defense has played well enough to keep them right in this ball game. We got another first down. It was second and four. Mike Shepard once again with the first down carry, and uh, Prestonsburg moves those chains. Gets out of the shadow of their own goal line. They're out past the 20 to the 24 yard line. up under center for the Black Cats. Full backfield. Keeper by Ratliff. He gets across the 30 to the 32. He scares me when he does that, Bill. <laughs> Holds that ball out gets there. Gets that ball out there to Reisner, <laughs> then tucks it back in and heads up the field with it in his own hands and uh, keep waiting for a defensive player to smack that thing out of his hands. Obviously, he's worked a lot in practice at that play because that's not something that you see a lot of quarterbacks do. Especially not right in the middle of the line. Pickup of about six, uh, second down at four for the Black Cats. Same backs in there, handoff to Shepard, number 30. 
He may have enough for the first down as the ball spotted just past the 35 and the chain spotted inside the 35. Right. Another first down. So Prestonburg uh, taking some time off the clock and they're moving the ball right now. 18 left to go in the ball game. 21 20. Hot well out on top by one. This Tell has you. been a dandy. Everything we expected it to be. Been an enjoyable ball game here tonight. Nip and tuck and hard fought all the way. Tell you what, there's something growing out there in those fields. I was out mowing the lawn this afternoon and my eyes have been itching and my nose has been watering ever since. I must have cut into <laughs> something with that mower. Hand off to Shepard, number 30, and he has hammered down for a loss of a couple down there at the 34, maybe got back to the 35-yard line. Close to the line of scrimmage. Good defensive play that time by the Panthers. Mark McCoy, uh, let's see what his number is. Number 30, Will? I got a Todd. Oh, there we go. Mark McCoy, number 33. There's three or four McCoys on this roster. Had to go and look and see what number we had there. They marked it back at the line of scrimmage, so he'll be second and ten for Prestonburg here. Rattle on a keeper. Got about six yards, maybe seven up to the 42. Now that time he was keeping all the way. He took that ball under and took off around the left side. Josh Baroni, one of the defenders on the tackle for Pikeville. They gave him six on the play, so it'll be third and four right here at uh, near midcourt. Six thirty-one and counting left in the ball game. Important third down play for the Black Cats. They need this one. Rattle from the keeper. Pitches no, yeah. out. Oh no! And Spurlock is just going to have to fall on the ball as the pitch out was not handled well. And uh, loss all the way back to the 34 yard line. Prestonsburg going to have to boot it away. 6 minutes and counting in the ball game. Prestonsburg down by 1 and they'll have to give the ball up here. It'll be 4th and 11 and they will be kicking. Cinnamon and uh, Coleman back as well as Hatfield. Triple safe, no, Cinnamon out and Hatfield back. Now double safeties from Pikeville. Pretty decent kick by Shepard. Comes into the hands of Coleman. He loses the football. Uh, I think he fell back on it. Pikeville will take over at 36. Must be slick tonight. It's uh, last two kicks we've had. It's gone through the boys' hands and they've just fallen on it. Kind of funky. We've got to check that towel that Ronnie Ford's using out out there. Make sure it doesn't have any possum grease on it there because the boys are having a hard time holding on the ball. Tell you what, Pop will have pretty good field position, though, Chuck. Start out with here up uh, around that 36-37 uh, yard line. Yeah, they've had the field advantage here in the second half as far as uh, where they've started on offense from. Pruitt still in at quarterback, gives off to Coleman. Coleman across the 40 to about the 42. Pick up of about six. Five oh seven and counting. Pikeville holding on to a one-point lead, 21 to 20. Referee calling a timeout here may have a flag delay a game or somebody moving. Might have been some movement on the line. Let's see. Line up in the neutral zone against Pikeville. They back it, it backs them up five yards. Now, if the defense does that, they call it encroachment. <laughs> but if the offense do, they say they lined up in the neutral zone. <laughs> In any event, Pikeville backed up five, makes it second down and a long nine, and nothing doing there for Kearney Weddington. Picked up maybe a yard and a half. Prestonsburg calls a timeout with 429 left. We'll go ahead and take a break here on Channel 5 Sports. Welcome back.
back, TW Hambly Athletic Center. Uh, 429 left in the ball game, and Michael with a one point lead, 21 to 20. They've got the football and they're not going to get it on third down. That is Brent Coleman. He's going to fall short of the first down, about uh, three yards short. And as uh, soon as uh, Pikeville downs the ball, Prestonsburg's taking a timeout. Don, you want to keep it here or take another break? We'll keep it here with 422 left. And uh, Prestonsburg obviously wanted to kill that clock, have some time to work on offense, Bill. Hey, Chuck, 422 left to go in the game, 21-20. It's, uh, hey, I'll tell you what, it's going to boil down to, the, to who's got the ball last. I'll tell you what, this has been a dandy. And uh, if Bill Wesley, if you'll back up here, we got to get this guy on camera, Dr. Don. He likes the camera and he likes to play sports, Bill Wesley. What about tonight's game, bud? It's been close. It's been everything I've heard. <laughs> it looks like he's about to that age where he likes to chase them cheerleaders around a little bit too. Bill. I think so. Here's his buddy, J.D. <laughs> Brought his buddy down here, Jeremy Dorton. All right. Greatest basketball player ever. Fourth down, Pikeville, the booted away. Looks like Adam Minix, number 89, back there in punt formation with the Panthers. Prestonsburg trying to get in on it. Good kick. Nice kick, and it's going to angle out of bounds inside the 20 at about the 17, maybe 18-yard line. He booted that in a few yards, had a good spiral on it. Well, they avoided the run back. That was about as good a kick as you're going to get from there. Went out of bounds, no run back, and inside the 20. So Prestonsburg will have 80 plus yards to go here with uh, 414 remaining in the ball game. And don't tell me these two teams aren't using some strategy and wanting to win this thing. They've both been calling timeouts and doing some different things, trying to set themselves up in a better position to win. This is kind of give them uh, bragging rights here in Eastern Kentucky. Uh, Pikeville and Prestonsburg have not played in a, in a, in a Good while, and uh, both of them want this ball game. Ratliff on a keeper. Boy, as he popped at the line of scrimmage. Good defense by the Panthers there. Number 10 for the Pikeville Panthers. That's uh, Ben Cassidy on the hit. You got nowhere. Well, there's one of those uh, <laughs> praying mantises, but that one wasn't quite as big as the one we saw last night. Was that one of them foot-long praying mantises? You had I that one we <laughs> saw down there. You could have used a flat gun to go after. It was huge. <laughs> oh. I was waiting for it to pick up a small child and carry it off now. It was a big one. That was a pretty good story, Chuck. I got it. Pass. That left a field. Ortega incomplete. Broken up by, in there by number 22 of Pikeville. A good pass there by Ratliff and a good defensive play by Josh Baroni in the backfield there. Ortega got one hand on it but couldn't pull it in. Good defense by Baroni that time to stay right with it and just uh, slap it away right at the last second. Damn. Ratliff showed a pretty accurate arm tonight, Bill. He's been right there on the money with the receivers, but uh, that time Ortega not able to really get open. Uh, good defensive play by Baroni. And a couple of other passes have been dropped. Be third and 10, Chuck. I'd say Pikeville will come after Ratliff with everything but the kitchen sink here, try to harass him into a loss or into throwing an interception. A couple of men in on him, looking upfield. Oh, no flag in the, oh, I can't believe that call. No flag, and uh, the intended receiver was pushed and coach the Litton, back. Coach Litton coach beside Litton himself is over. livid. I saw the play, and uh, he's got a right to complain about that one. I saw that one. Number 40, the intended receiver, Robbie Reisner, got bumped in the back from uh, Prestonsburg, and we've got players, uh, people coming in from uh, the sidelines, the referees throwing some flags. But uh, Bill Letton is just furious on the sideline. That was uh, looked like an interference to me for up here in the press box there, Bill. Uh, not a big hit, but there was a little bumping going on at the end. Coach Letton wasn't uh, real happy about it, obviously. No, he was not. Both these coaches very much want to win this ball game, and it was obvious from Bill Letton's uh, uh, expression over there on the far side that he was not a bit happy with that last play.
Hillard Howard asking for an explanation of the last play. He's not heard anything yet either. receiver there the man that uh, thought he got pushed and he's out of the ball game for Prestonsburg so it's going to be a big penalty against the Black Cats and uh, they're going to have a fourth down here and a long ways to go and uh, this move deep way back in there. their territory I'd say they're going to have to boot it away Bill and just hope the defense can uh, get the ball back for them should give it uh, Potwell excellent field position they'll be well, the ball will be marked back there right around the four or five yard line, Chuck. Two unsportsmanlike calls brings it back to the four. That's about 30 yards in penalties, almost 30 yards. <laughs> Chuck, I'll tell you what, you really hate to see that, uh, really that kind of call real late in the ball game like this. But Obviously, Bill Letton and also the intended receiver, Robbie Reisner, felt that there was some interference and some bumping going on there. and. Uh, they weren't a bit happy with it, and uh, Pikeville, whether there was or wasn't, we're not going to sit up here and judge because we weren't cl that close to the play. But uh, Pikeville catching a break in any instance there. And H Hatfield fumbles the ball on the front. I believe Preston got, it. got it. I believe Preston has got it, Chuck. A Let's big see. scramble for the ball. Who comes up with it? Hatfield fumble. I think the Black Cats recovered, but yep. then it squirted out again. So let's see. They're still trying to unpile these guys. Preston Prestonsburg has got the football. So Bill Letton uh, getting a little bit of justice there, at least if you're a Black Cat fan. And uh, the Black Cats will take over at their own 36-yard uh, line for the first down and 10. <laughs> so what's so some action we've had here lately? Uh, in the catch. last couple of minutes, we sure have. Fire catch called for, and it slipped through his hands. <laughs> You'd hate to see Prestonsburg lose on a, on a controversial call like that. And uh, whether they would have made the first down otherwise is immaterial because they've got the first down now. Uh, we'll see what happens here at the 36 yard line. Thomas Ratliff back to pass. Got a man open. That is Ortega. He holds on to the football at midfield. First down. 252 left to go in the ball game, so they'll move the chains. I try to be as impartial as I can. I know a lot of people in Prestonsburg. I know a lot of people down here in Pikeville. I know a lot of people in between. And uh, we just try to call know, them away. We see them here. There's a call that's a little iffy or controversial. You know, I give you my opinion. Bill gives you his opinion. And uh, our opinions are two that don't count, really, because we're not out there in striped shirts. But uh, you'd hate to see a game, you know, decided by a, a, a call or a lack of it there. And uh, we'll see what happens here the last two minutes and 45 seconds between Pikeville and Prestonsburg. Ratliff fumbles and picked up the hole. I tell you what, Ratliff fumbled. Ratliff fumbled and it went to, into the hands of number 80 for Prestonburg, and he dropped it. Wayne, Waylon Bevins dropped it, and uh, a big, big break for the Black Cats down on the bottom of the line. There, Ryan Ortega comes back up with it as Pikeville lost control of it. Cade Cinnamon tried to pick it up. Let's say Prestonsburg ball. Well, I'll tell you what, the uh, ball fumbled. We've got a man hurt down there on the field. They Number dodged 40. a bullet there. Number 40, let's check who that is. Uh, Chris Strait, who's done a good job at linebacker tonight. Looks like he may have a bad cramp uh, in that calf. or may have twisted something there, too, as they were piled up. <laughs> but uh, Black Cats really dodged a bullet there. Bill Ratliff lost the ball. Blevins got it back. He lost it. It rolled out of his hands and looked like Ryan Ortega might have outbattled Cade Cinnamon of Pike for the football. With 237 left and Black Cats retain possession. I'll tell you what, we've had some uh, <laughs> action here in this last, what, six, seven minutes of play. One point ball game. Pike in the lead, 21 20. The Black Cats with the football. Ratliff back to pass. Got a man open on the sidelines. Is no it good. complete or In not? Incomplete. Out of bounds. Ortega, the intended receiver, stops the clock, though. That'll, uh, that'll move it up to second and 10. 
Ball right at that 40 yard line. 225 left in the ball game. Second down, 10 yards to go. This game here, I tell you, with the growth of Prestonsburg football once again, the last couple of three years, Bill, and uh, Pikeville always has a good program. I think this is a natural rivalry between these two football teams, and I think it's a game that they should play, if not in the Pike County Bowl every year, they should uh, find a spot on their schedule to play each other, yeah. This is, uh, of course, like the uh, another rivalry that's a great tradition, uh, of course, is Belfry and Pikeville. Right. Pikeville, before they got into all these different districts and regions and things, used to play Prestonsburg, used to play Paintsville, and the way they've got it set up now, it kind of takes away a couple of good, good rivalries. Nice run by Shepard. He breaks a couple of tackles, and finally, Kate Cinnamon brings him down from behind, and we've got a flag over there where the tackle was made, and Cinnamon down on the ground. He may have been shaken up a little bit around the 13-yard line. Cinnamon still down on the ground uh, down there, and a couple of the coaches coming out to check him out. Looks like Ron Mann and one of the other coaches. Uh, Ron Mann, of course, a team doctor. Face mask on Pikeville. So I tell you what, after Prestonsburg got that break on that punt return uh, fumble by Hatfield, uh, Pikeville's made a couple of mistakes here. They missed a chance to recover a fumble, and now they're guilty of a face mask penalty, and Pikeville wants a timeout with 148 left in this ball game to talk things over as they've got their back against the wall. So we'll take a timeout here on Channel 5 Sports. Welcome back. Hamley Athletic Center, 148 left in the ball game. Chuck Scoville, Bill Bevins, Don Bevins, and uh, who do we got? J.D. and uh, Bill Wesley and Jeremy Dorn up here. Okay. <laughs> J.D. and Bill buddy. Wesley. All right. We got the whole crew here. 148 left, 21-20 to score. Pikeville with their backs against the wall. Prestonsburg first and goal from the six-yard line, Bill. Ratliff. And, whoa, not much running room there. Stacked up right at the five. Might have got about a yard, Chuck. So it'll be uh, Eddie Ramos checking in number 42 into the middle of that Pikeville line. Tell you what, Pikeville's had a couple opportunities to stop this Prestonsburg drive, and uh, they've run into a little bad luck here the last couple of minutes. Prestonsburg fussing about four minutes ago of, uh, over a no call on a supposed interference play, and they got a couple of unsportsmanlike conduct calls against them. Then Pikeville returned the favor by uh, fumbling a punt return and minutes, was guilty of a face masking penalty here after a play. So uh, they've given Prestonsburg new life. So mistakes have hurt both teams here in this fourth period. 118 and counting. Prestonsburg second and goal from the five. Ratliff on a keeper. Stopped at the two yard line, looks like. Maybe the three. Let's see where they're going to mark it. See, Prestonsburg here is looking to use all four downs, Bill, to get that ball into the end zone. 54 seconds. They've got two downs left. The ball on the two. They're going to try to run this clock out and also try to score. Plenty of time. Ratliff struggles. Is he in? Yes or no? Not seen any. Uh, no indication oh, yeah. yet. Fourth and less than a yard, it looks like. He did. Let's see, he didn't make it. Let's see. No, he didn't gain anything. Fourth and still over a yard, it looks like, where they spotted. Dr. Don advises us that we just got a couple minutes left on uh, tape, but we're down to 16 seconds here, Chuck. So Last go. play of the ball game. This the is it. Pressensburg scores. They win. They don't. They lose. Yes or no? Yes, the referee marks the ball across the plane and the Black Cats have scored with two seconds left in the ball game. You talk about a barn burner. <laughs> Prestonsburg played it perfectly, absolutely perfectly. They had just a uh, 
minute left on the scoreboard and they had a couple of plays left and they ran that clock down as far as they could knowing that if they took as much time as that off there they'd only give Pikeville maybe one play left in the ball game and uh, Hillard Howard getting on to Eddie DeRamus as he slung a helmet about quick. All right we're back and uh, let's see flags all over the place down there Chuck before the kick. I had two seconds left. It's 26 to 21 as uh, Prestonburg took it in on the last uh, score there with 10 seconds left. That's all right. The clock doesn't start on a on a penalty point after. So uh, Piper will, I would think, would get the kick off, get the ball back. Last year, but looks like they've still got a pretty strong football team. No doubt about it. And that kick is going to come up short and underneath the goal post and. Uh, Score remains 26-21. Pikeville will get the ball back from Prestonsburg here on the kickoff if we get these last two seconds yeah, played. Another, another flag was thrown there, Chuck. I tell you what, the Pikeville fans here are used to winning, and Prestonsburg's gotten used to winning, and uh, both of them uh, wanting this ball game real bad, and uh, only one of them can have it, and I tell you what, there's a little bit of hard feeling out on the field right now between these two ball clubs, but it is a natural rivalry, and I'd love to see these two teams play on a regular basis. It's been a real good game. They're, They're going to go for two, though. Pitch out to Shepard. Shepard cuts inside, gets to the seven, and that's it. No go. No, you don't run the clock on a point after. The clock doesn't no. run down. I don't know what everybody's getting excited about. You get the try the point after whether you got zero seconds on the clock or not. So Pikeville will get one last chance on the kickoff to get the football. The clock will not start until a Pikeville player touches the ball on the kickoff. All right, kickoff, just two seconds, Chuck. Let's see. Ball's dropped. Pooch kick goes to Hatfield. He's not going to have enough room to get the ball upfield, and Pikeville gets knocked out of bounds. And Prestonsburg, with a comeback victory in the fourth quarter, they beat the Pikeville Panthers 26 to 21. First time they played in about five years, and it's a sweet victory for Bill Letton's Black Cats, who came in here as a slight underdog to Hillard Howard's Panthers. And uh, Hillard Howard. Returning as head coach, his uh, first game comes out on the L side of the column, Bill. That's a surprise. It was a uh, real good ball game, Chuck. Uh, of course, uh, Prestonburg had the ball there, and they uh, run it down there with a minute left to go. With, and with, with two seconds left to go on the score clock, they uh, went ahead and punched it in for the winning touchdown. Great ball game, and uh, I tell you what, I'm really glad to see these two teams play each other. Hillard Howard, of course, playing a, a tough opponent here early in the season. They don't meet up with uh, anybody that I don't think they can handle until uh, midway in the season when they take on the Belfry Pirates. So this is a good test for this young ball club just to kind of let them know where they're at and uh, let them know where they need to go if they're going to go back to the um, state championships in Louisville again. Two real good squads here, two real good coaches, and uh, two great programs. Sure was, and a great ball game. Dr. Don and uh, you and I, we had a good time down here tonight.